Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and in today's video we are revisiting the Remarkable Paper Pro and a little bit of the whole Remarkable platform and this is a video that I wanted to make for quite a while because I've started to receive a lot of uh, emails and questions and messages regarding this issue uh, particularly because it ties into any content that's actually displayed on a Remarkable Paper Pro or a Remarkable 2 or Remarkable 1 for that matter and it does inherently also uh, link to MDO or MMP and what are those you may ask? Well those are the products that I have on mydeepguide.com slash shop and you can find both MDO and MMP MMP there which are hyperlinked PDF documents which help you in the case of MDO organize all of your yearly quarterly monthly weekly daily uh, professional or personal organized journaling needs and in the case of MMP my deep guide meeting planner it helps you centralize simplify and uh, organize all of your meeting planning needs uh, purchasing of these products not only gives you an excellent uh, organizer of for your needs but it also helps the independence of my deep guide but the point is here that there is a bit of a problem with how uh, colors and content is actually rendered in the reader aspect of the Remarkable platform. So let's dive in. All right, so here's my Remarkable Paper Pro and this is what I want to actually talk about. So the main issue here that uh, I've addressed before is um, something that you can easily kind of see here. So for example, if I open MDO, um, there's an incorrect way of rendering colors on the Remarkable. And the problem lies in actually uh, the way that the reader app renders colors or shades of gray or colors. What you will notice here is that here's a weekly overview of the um, MD, MDO and there are no grays whatsoever. Everything is monocolor, right? So there's no nothing. However, there should be gray boxes here in the header and each day should have a gray heading box as well, which is not rendered here. However, if I do exit from the document and if I now zoom in on the thumbnail that the system automatically generated, you should see something interesting. So yes, while the resolution is low because it is just a thumbnail and this is extremely zoomed in, even from that low res uh, thumbnail, what you can notice is that we do have light shades of gray in the header for different sections and you do have light shades of gray rendered here um, in the sections for each of the days, which is the correct way that it should be displayed. But on Remarkable Paper Pro, this issue actually expands a little bit further. So I've prepared a um, PDF document here, which basically just takes all of the uh, default Excel colors um, that an Excel sheet has uh, in its palette. So I've just filled in every cell with each of the colors so you have the grayscale and then you have all the colors that you normally recognize right and here we are looking at the thumbnail of this uh, single page PDF file because I exported that sheet then as a PDF imported it here so that I can show you guys this uh, this thing and also this is a new test that I want to incorporate when testing out color devices so seemingly this seems correct because each of the blocks here is individual right so it has an individual color and all the colors are rendered correctly we're not talking here about the quality of the colors or anything it's just a representation that all of the colors are rendered and all of the shades of gray are also rendered in an individual basis now let me zoom out and then enter the document and show you what happens when we actually open this document which as we see here, the device and the screen are perfectly capable of displaying the whole color gamut here. See what happens when you open it up in the reader. All right, I zoomed out and now you have the, uh, the landscape orientation because this is a landscape oriented uh, PDF. So all of the colors rendered correctly. Let's open it up. This is not what we have seen in the preview and 
you can uh, now start to kind of see why this is the type of document that I'm using because it clearly exposes where the weaknesses and the issue actually lies. And the issue is in the uh, top range and the bottom range, meaning the uh, light color compression and the dark color compression is too aggressive. And it's so aggressive, in fact, that it actually, you can very clearly see which of the ranges are completely eaten up. So what's happening here? Well, this is something that I talked about before. And this is basically calibration of the rendering of the colors and each device naturally has that. So for example, on the Supernote, even though it is a uh, monochromatic device, you still have contrast control with which you can adjust this kind of behavior. You can make uh, light colors brighter and dark colors darker and that therefore you are compressing the image and popping up the contrast. So more contrast you have, less range you will have and less sensitivity you will have in the higher white and the lower dark regions. Now on the books platform you have really really extensive controls where you can fine-tune separately the, um, the lightness and the darkness uh, levels and also the vividness of the colors and the color devices. Um, unfortunately on a remarkable since this is a really really closed off platform you don't have almost any control. The only control that we do have is the contrast filter. And this is actually without the contrast filter applied. So this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the tamest mode that you can have your images displayed or colors displayed in a reader on the uh, Remarkable Paper Pro. So if I go and turn the contrast filter to on, come on, oh it's so slow, come on, on, so if I turn it on, then it actually becomes even worse because we just compressed even more. So the setting for optimized for text, this is higher contrast setting and you can clearly see that the lightness has been increased because now this row here is completely rendered white. We have one, two, three, four, five blocks rendered white, white purely white uh, in the grayscale uh, contrast here. The lower two blacks are completely gone and merged. And this one here, which is the faded, uh, or faded colors of the palette here, all of them except this one here are gone. And we've actually even moved into the bottom range here. On the bottom end of scale where we have the darker, darker colors, what well, we have, <laughs> these here are completely gone and basically all except the uh, yeah, sand and yellow color or orange and yellow color darkest uh, ranges are actually coming through this filter. Everything else is dark enough for the settings to interpret it as dark enough to be considered black. And these are light enough to be considered white. And therefore the reader or the device actually does that without you having the ability to do anything about it at all. The only thing that you can do is actually just go like, okay, so if I don't want uh, the high contrast option, if I want it for images, I'll switch it on to optimize for images. And here we can see that, well, we can call that this one is interpreted as a color because it does have a bit of pinkishness there. And this one here and this one there, this one also has a bit of yellowishness. These, not so much, not, not really. They do have some pigments, but not so much. Um, however, our dynamic range has expanded. You can clearly see that, but it's still really not sensitive enough because the bottom two or the highest two ranges of gray or the lightest two grays are interpreted as pure white. And similarly, we still cannot have the option of uh, actually seeing the full color gamut of an image despite the device, both the device and the screen being perfectly capable of displaying them because as you can see, this is displaying the full color gamut. So this is how I would expect the device to actually display this document. Full range of grayscale, full range of the palette here. 
this plate. Now, the quality of colors and all that kind of stuff that will depend on the technology, blah, 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 blah. But we as an end user need to have an option where the filter is off. Like when it says that it's off, that it's completely off. Not remarkable default setting, but completely off like it is here. So that you can, as a user, have an option to display all of the colors that this device actually can display. So the, the reason why I actually wanted to show this in this way and focus on the thumbnails here is basically that the, this unquestionably shows that the hardware side of things is good on the Remarkable Paper Pro or whatever, as far as this goes. So the screen, the hardware can display this. And here's the uh, irrefutable evidence that this is in fact the case. However, on a Remarkable platform, the users are simply hindered by the software that seems to act like it knows way better than their users do. I know that they are working on this particular aspect for the update 316. And this is why I wanted to uh, cover this issue before 316 comes out so that we have the behavior documented here and examples. And once 316 comes out, and indeed, if this uh, feature has remained one of the focal points of the update that they are working on, then I will uh, repeat the same test and do a comparison so that we can see how that uh, actually works pre-316 pre pre and post-316. And for completeness sake, I just uh, took out my Remarkable 2 and I'm opening the same document on Remarkable 2 to basically just test out how it can handle the same document, obviously not in colors, but what we're looking for is the ability of the, or how the tablet has been calibrated and if it is able to actually differentiate between the different uh, colors in this palette. And what we can see is that actually Remarkable 2, the reader on the Remarkable 2, is calibrated in a much, much better way because we do not have complete uh, uh, white blotches or black blotches at all. Each color is actually differentiated. Here we have very light gray and then this one. Then we have this gradient here. And on the dark end of range, we do have differentiation in gray interpretation of these colors, which is definitely a good thing to see. Further proof of this calibration that it is actually done well can be determined in the same type of document and the same type of page where we have the weekly overview in the MDO. And now you can see that in the header, same type of stuff, but what's rendered completely white and interpreted as, nope, this is the white color on, on the Remarkable Paper Pro, on a Remarkable uh, 2, it is actually interpreted correctly. And you can see in the header, we have that light gray and each of the days here does have that uh, light gray uh, uh, heading uh, also covered as a background, which again makes sense because it mimics exactly what we've seen in the color palette PDF that we've checked previously. All right, so hopefully this stuff that we've covered on Remarkable Paper Pro and Remarkable 2 uh, helps you understand a little bit more what is actually going on when you transfer a document that looks normal on your computer, on everywhere, and then you open it up on Remarkable and suddenly some things are simply not as normal. So the thing to remember is that the contents of your document have not changed. So the colors that you're not seeing or seeing as black or white, uh, they are still there, normal, unaffected. It's just simply the fact of how these devices are displaying these colors and in particular how Remarkable Paper Pro is displaying colors in any of the modes that we have. I sincerely hope that the upcoming uh, update 316, which is supposed to address this issue, as I already mentioned, I hope that it addresses it in a good and elegant way. And what does that mean? Well, 
one of the things that I would really like to see, I expect that they are going to recalibrate things. That, that I expect out of the get-go. But I really hope that Remarkable changes their mindset and starts opening up the, uh, their platform and their tablet to the user a little bit. What would that mean? Well, we could start with a filter that's truly completely off. Because even now, when you set the filter, contrast filter to off, it's, as we've clearly seen, it's not really off. It's just low or their default, but it's not off. It's off when you see it in the main menu. And that's the only instance where on the Remarkable Paper Pro, I've been able to actually observe the correct uh, gamut of colors actually being displayed uninterrupted by the softer side of the Remarkable tablet. So. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you experienced this issue? Have you known about what it is? And does this affect you in any way, shape or form? And much more importantly, if you are a Remarkable Paper Pro user, I'm interested to hear from you if you uh, have an idea of what type of implementation for this type of level of control would be adequate to you, if any at all because that will help me kind of understand more where the Remarkable Paper Pro users stand on this type of issue. I've shared with you mine, um, so I'm interested to hear about yours. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!